All right, we have officially started. So thank you everyone for being here. I'll let uh, Juan do the housekeeping for a little bit. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Type Electives uh, online lecture series of the fall. Uh, we're really happy for you all to be here. Uh, this uh, We are Type Electives, uh, Lynn and I. We are the co-directors of the school. Uh, and basically, we try to offer courses that go beyond traditional type design education, which means a, a range of life classes that focus on letter forms, including type design, lettering, and creative technology. And we like to work with faculty that uh, approach their practice from a place of criticality and love and respect their responsibility. And we're also excited to work with students that are also are interested in exploring a future founded in those principles. Um, to go on the next slide, uh, this is our third in our lecture series. Uh, the previous two uh, speakers were Joe Malinis and Liam Bury. Our the talks are now you know, free and online and they're already on our website. So I encourage you to check them out and watch them. And next week, we also have another another lecturer. So make sure you sign up to that. Uh, but before we go and announce, uh, introduce Kel, uh, there's another announcement you want to make uh, about our classes. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> so flip, flip it too fast. Uh, yes. So, yes. So we have, uh, in addition to the spirit of the school, trying to keep on trying new things, um, we have uh, our advanced type foundations, calligraphy by Jamie Chang, and intro to kinetic type by uh, by Candice Batalho. And uh, Intro to Kinetic Type is sold out, but we still have seats available in Jamie's class, Advanced Type Foundations Calligraphy. So if you have done type design before um, and want to get, you know, want to get diving in into advanced foundations um, or, you know, all of the, all of, how should I say this? Like, if you have ever wondered how someone as talented as Jamie keeps turning out such wild, great, original looking design, like this is your chance. And so I highly recommend um, both of them uh, grab seats in Jamie's class when you can. And uh, also one little plug here, if you can support the scholarship fund, we really encourage you to make a contribution, which enables us to open doors and make these class, uh, classes more accessible to folks everywhere. So that's our little plug. And without further ado, I am super duper duper excited to introduce our star of the day, Kel. Um, Kel is a type designer, <laughs> lettering artist, graffiti writer, educator, living in Oakland, California, temporarily in Maui right now. Um, uh, Kel works with Letter from Archive to collect graffiti magazines, drawings, and books. And Kel is a co-curator of the exhibition Subscription to Mischief at Letterform Archive, showcasing the 1990s graffiti community and the independent publishing that documented it. Kel started writing graffiti in 2000 and has continued to add letter-based interests ever since. Uh, he studied type design at Type of Cooper West, worked at Monotype, and currently works on freelance and freelance type and lettering projects, which you'll see a lot of today. Very excited about that as well. Um, I'm sure all of you are. And his company, Overlap Type, focuses on type design that utilizes ideas from all of these, uh, most of all, including the graffiti experience highlight. Uh, I mean, you can't deny that Kel is a letter affectionado from all of these above, and we're super duper duper excited. Please take, um, please, uh, you know, take the mic from me, Kel. Thank you so much for being here. Awesome. Uh Thanks. Yeah, this is uh this is rad. I'm super excited to share stuff. And uh I kind of just I feel like I my slides just like uh blow out your intro with basically everything you said. I'm also gonna be talking about, but hopefully showing everything <laughs> a little more exciting and talking a lot about work. So uh, I'm excited to do that. So give me just one sec to share. Oh, I also have one little plug. We'll have some time for QA. So if you have questions, like you can pop them in the QA function in the webinar. Or you can pop them in the chat and then we'll keep them in record. Great. Can you see my screen? All right. Woo. Little virtual yes. class. Right on. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, like I was saying, I'm going to be talking about all kinds of work and stuff and, and kind of like thoughts a little bit on work or about the idea of what work or your practice looks like. Um, 
but yeah, this is an overlap of letter studies. So first and foremost, hopefully my and on my Zoom screen, I'm covering the words here. So I'll try to move this around. Um, just giving a big shout out to uh, the friends over at Type Electives. Uh, I've worked uh, under both of these two at Monotype. I've uh, just been around both of them for a lot of these sort of type community things and workshops and all kinds of cool stuff. I got to TA for Lynn at a workshop a long time ago too. Um, but I'm a huge fan of what they're doing with type and education in general and just uh, feel pretty supported as an educator person or trying to be more of an educator person that that I can like pitch some crazy idea and get <laughs> and get to make this class and then have to really make that class and figure out what what a class for about graffiti for type designers might look like and that's that's all been really exciting and fun and uh, challenging and cool and so uh, yeah probably wouldn't have made that uh, leap definitely not anytime uh, soon unless it was for you guys. So thanks so much for that. Um, let's see. Uh, so this is me. <laughs> um, this, this is my intro slide to my whole, <laughs> whole like kind of holistic, maybe childhood, maybe on through to being interested in design, but it starts with comic books and it starts with uh, you know, things like Garfield with shades on, but, um, <laughs> but comic books were a big part for me. I was a collector of comic books that were collectors going to come up a lot. Um, and I also just was kind of obsessed with drawing, uh, cartoony kind of comic forms and also outlined letter forms and things like that, all of that, uh, real early on. Um, and at some point I got really interested in graffiti and it just, it just was this whole world and I kept getting more and more and more interested in uh, into it. And I'm still like that. It's, it's been, it hasn't changed. Nothing's different. I still try to paint uh, as often as I can. And I still follow all the stuff that's happening. And I still try to pay attention to all of the writers in the younger generations that are doing their work now, but it's just, it's kind of a lifelong practice in a lot of ways. And, um, and that, sort of got me interested in graphic design. And I think it mostly got me interested. I always had a thing about magazines. I was always really interested in magazines. And I, I kind of wonder, um, uh, I'm over 40 now, surprisingly. Um, I kind of wonder if it's like generational too, that like my, my time in high school and my time maybe right before high school was uh, if I wanted to be interested in sort of art or culture or design or anything rad that was happening that was in a magazine and those were like the that was the way you accessed that it wasn't blogs that was a little later it wasn't Instagram that's way later um and so in my generation that's I feel like that was magazines and I just wanted everything to do with magazines and I had magazines you know like I was interested in like sport like rollerblading and skateboarding magazines when I was a kid and I was interested in all kinds of stuff so I'd always had magazines as this weird theme and uh as I got into graffiti and hip hop, there's magazines for that, super interested in that. And kind of like all of this got me into graphic design. And I basically thought like, how do I get into magazines or how do I become part of this thing that's happening in magazines? So that led me to think I should study graphic design maybe. I was really interested in Anthem and Tokion, two kind of really like design or art uh, magazines that were really rad, both of which actually, uh, as the magazine era started to end, turned into fashion magazines, and I disliked them completely. <laughs> it was over. I mean, they still had good graphic design, but they, they just they both started as cool art magazines. Uh, the this anthem on the top has a, a painting by Espo on the cover, and uh, absolutely love it. And uh, this mass appeal on the bottom left corner is a uh, cover by Greg Lamarche, who I ended up working with a lot later. Um, so anyway, this is sort of my my intro to. It's hectic. That's kind of like me <laughs> in a lot of ways. There's a lot of different things that I'm interested in. It's all letter stuff. It's all kind of related and, and stuff together. And so that's sort of what I'm going to be talking about today. And part of that is work. I've kind of separated this out to like, what does work look like for me? But I don't think of, I'm not trying to think of work as the things that I get paid to do as much as I'm trying to think of work as like the maybe more holistic, like what does a whole practice look like? 
Um, and yeah, I treat all this stuff about the same. It doesn't matter that some of these are paid gigs and some of these cost me money all the time and that's fine. Uh, this is just, that's just part of what I think of. It's all part of like my general work or what I'm doing on, on the regular. And it might make sense why my <laughs> stuff is maybe a little bit more chaotic <laughs> because I have a lot of these different interests and I'm not really stopping following any of them. So <laughs> that's part of the deal. Firstly, uh, and probably um, part of why I'm here is that I'm a type designer. Um, here's a couple of things I've made or that are in progress or playing around with. Um, have plenty of other stuff too, as we all do as type designers. There's 10 times more in a in a folder on our desktop than there is in public view ever. <laughs> um, but yeah, always new stuff on the way. Um, and type design has been really fun and really interesting. And uh, I've been doing that for about five years, I guess. Uh, and then there's lettering. This is just some kind of older stuff, but uh, I've done a lot of lettering work. I do a lot of things with uh, ink on paper. I'm really into the idea of like this grainy or harsh stuff like this. If you see this big block party poster, um, I had a lot of fun <laughs> basically pretending I was letter set <laughs> letters and doing all of this by hand on a huge 11 by set, like real size uh, 11 by 17 uh, drawing. So. That, I really like all this analog work too. I'm I'm a big uh, lettering person or drawing person. And I have this rad lettering gig. <laughs> These are a couple of the signs I've done. Uh, I have this rad lettering gig. Uh, highly recommend anyone who's into letter stuff, type stuff in general to find themselves a regular gig that they can do all the time. Um, I've been working with the same butcher shop for 11 years on uh, these chalkboard signs. And one of the projects I do for them constantly is they have these big three foot by five foot chalkboards that they hang in the front windows and they're kind of framed. And so I, uh, I get text from them and everything else is up to me, except I have a time crunch. I really don't have more than 10 minutes to sketch anything before I start these. And I really only have maybe two hours max to pull these off. And so I'm using some pens. I have a couple tricks up my sleeve over the years of trying to get faster at this stuff, but it's like a regular practice to just knock something out. And and part of that speed thing, part of that like that kind of practice makes, at least for me, it makes me uh, dig into my bag <laughs> for <clears throat> for like the letters that I'm thinking about at that time. So if that's a script typeface, if that's uh, some cool signage I saw, if that's like referencing some show card lettering from the 1940s, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm always dipping into like, oh, this would be cool to work on. I'm going to try to recreate something like that. Um, <clears throat> so I have a lot of these. It's just a few. Um, and uh, here's one up close a little bit. Uh, and so you can see kind of <laughs> a little bit of glimpse of my workstation. This is a butcher table and I'm just there at night setting up my sign and uh, doing my, my thing. Um, and yeah, just using a couple different kinds of chalk markers to do this work. If you notice the turkey and the delivery uh, letters, those are going to come uh, make a <laughs> another appearance later as, as a typeface. So some of this stuff is just things I'm thinking about or working on, and they eventually turn into typefaces or they're typefaces I'm working on. And I just want to redraw them a lot and try to think about how to tweak them or how to make them taller or what the heavier weight would look like things like that so um yeah a lot of this is uh pretty loose the one thing i do have going for me that you don't see here uh that makes a lot of these work is blue uh painters tape as all of my uh baselines and stuff that's what i, I set up a grid i draw all the letters peel the grid off it looks better that's something I, it took me a couple of years to figure that one out too but um, yeah, anyway, this has been a pretty fun practice and I still have a lot of fun doing it because like I said, there uh, there are no design notes. <laughs> and so I am I just need to make sure it's legible and can work on the street, like to see on the street from the windows. Um, and I'm doing a lot of, a decent amount of teaching these days. Let me see if I can make this a little smaller. Um, I've been having a lot of fun with this. I... Uh, like I said, I just started, I just taught a new class for the first time with uh, type electives called Graffiti Concepts for uh, Type People. And I've been teaching with uh, type both Type West and just Letter from Archives uh, intro workshops um, quite a bit for the last few years. Uh, and 
I love it. It's a really fun and really interesting kind of process and coming up with a new class was was something really challenging but really fun and I I had a lot I'll talk a little bit more about graffiti stuff but I had a lot of ideas about what um what would sort of be acceptable about <laughs> teaching graffiti stuff to type people this isn't that this is kind of just what that general what teaching generally looks like for me these days uh, it's mostly all on zoom um this is some work from my uh from the students of the uh, recent type electives workshop, just some sketches from all of them. I tried to tuck everybody in if I could. Um, and I, yeah, I had so much fun with this and it was also really challenging because at the end of the day, I need, I'm, I'm making a class that has to be extremely respectful to the graffiti writing community that I come from and that I care about and bridge that to the type design community without giving license to the type of community to steal from <laughs> or take anything or exploit the graffiti writing world. Um, and so I kind of, I tried to think a lot about all the different ways to be respectful in that way, to be, to, if I'm going to be this person and try to bridge this thing for, for people that aren't from graffiti writing, like what cool stuff can I bring and what stuff can I like steer people away from? And how do I, convey that message so it's been a lot of fun to work on I think it's still that's still like a work in progress in some ways as I keep thinking about more um more ways to do that but it is really fun to kind of highlight this graffiti writing world and and talk about it in a different way and kind of translate it as best I can uh yeah it's a lot of fun um and through that class I've been thinking a lot about this concept and it's just like one random tidbit to throw in here but I think it's been fun for me to think about that there's a lot of room in letter form work in between the genres and so if you see the sketch on the the p-a-n-l on the very top and the p-a-n-l on the very bottom the top one is kind of a typographic drawing the bottom one is uh what I would consider kind of like a typical bar piece that might be on a subway train in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, and so both of these are sort of standard in their genre a little bit. I know I've already like started doing some uh, stuff to the typographic one to, <laughs> to make it uh, translate a little better for me, but, um, and all of those overlaps you see. But uh, I, I think there's some really fun stuff in like the second one down. If anywhere, anywhere in between, the steps in between those two things, I think if you look at the second line there, um, I don't feel like that is a graffiti piece. And I also don't feel like that is a type letter, like a, a classic type letter form. And I think there's something really fun in that. That's in between genres of something and it's somewhere that we can be exploring. So that's something we did a lot in the, in the recent workshop. Um, like I said, I'm also a graffiti writer. Uh, this is a legal piece that I did uh, during a time when Oakland had boarded up all the windows and the businesses asked us to paint some stuff and it was around the election. So I did a vote uh, on November 3rd, a couple of years ago. Um, and I don't share most of this work with people and I'm still not going to, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry if that's if I, if I, like uh, uh, led you on on that one. But um, this, I do a lot of, uh, pieces. This is something I grew up doing. I'm still somewhat involved. Uh, I, but I keep that work to myself. It's, it's part of my practice. It's part of my work. Um, but it's its own thing and it's separated and I don't really need, uh, a credit for it in a lot of ways. And it's kind of, I, that, I feel like that work sort of belongs to that subculture. And so people from that subculture might know my work in that way. And people from type might know my work in a totally different context. And so, I think that's fine and that's kind of part of how it has to be in some ways based on being able to still do uh graffiti letter forms in uh, uh as i get older and as i keep going uh there's some precautions that have to be taken um yeah uh hopefully so far you're kind of seeing similar skills used in multiple kinds of work uh I, this is the stuff that keeps me motivated but honestly it's like the stuff that I do I just keep doing all of this work and I keep being more interested in new new things um but it's studying letters right it's every one of these things is like 
just getting more and more nerdy about my thing that I, the things that I cared about a million years ago. And I just keep digging deeper and deeper into all those and maybe find a new facet for them. But I, that's all kind of the same study. Um, and then there's collecting. And this is part of the chaoticness. <laughs> I, I wish my bookshelf was a little prettier in this photo. I should have probably uh, made it work <laughs> better, but this is a uh, part of my bookshelf at home. Um, and I have been a collector for a long time. So part of I got some of that through graffiti, which I'll talk about in a sec, but I um, collect a lot of books on lettering and show card writing and design. And I have I have those old magazines that I referenced. I, I keep a lot of that stuff. Um, I have a ton of stuff uh, from graffiti, both scenes and books and, and things like that. And then also just, I keep a paper reference too. I have a lot of like kind of ephemera and like early printed work and old signs that I was able to grab and things like that. Like a lot of cool, uh, I've been collecting stuff for a long time. I don't necessarily have uses for this stuff as much as I think of it all as reference material. And I've organized it decently well at home so that when I am thinking about a new script that I wanna make, I have 10 different references in the show card writing from the thirties to the forties. And then I have newer stuff. And then I have, you know, the newer Luis Feely book. And then I have the, whatever, I have like a, a, a good handful of stuff that I can reference all at once. And I might look back at the subway era and see what letter set they were referencing on the subway trains in the seventies. And then I'll look at the letter set books and be like, oh yeah, this is probably from that. And then I'll, I'll start there. So a lot of my type or lettering projects are heavily referenced by a lot of different uh, sources. And that's just because I'm collecting, because <laughs> I'm a collecting maniac in a lot of ways. Um, and then there's taking photos. And I've just kind of recently stopped thinking of myself as a photographer and started thinking, and started thinking about all of this as part of a collection. <laughs> so this is just me collecting. It's just collecting reference that goes on in folders as organized as I can on my computer instead of as organized as I can on my bookshelf. And so um, I did grow up taking photos. Uh, one thing I learned from the from growing up doing graffiti is that if you don't take photos of the work that you care about, it's gone the next time you go back to see it. And so that became documenting became super important for that kind of work. Um, and then that made me realize that all these old signs that I love that I see all the time in my city are also going to be gone. And so I started documenting all the old signs right around the same time that I realized graffiti was important to me and I should save it. I was also walking around with my film camera and I was documenting all the signs that I saw that I also knew I should save. And so I've been doing that for a long time. These days I just use my iPhone and it's pretty normal and I get this straight on shot of a sign and it's nothing, there's not much photography left in it other than I care about these letter forms and I want to figure out how to save them and I'm going to hold on to them for a long time and reference them. So they're all in different folders. They're all set up as like different reference material. I think of it all as collecting these days. Um, and I do the same with graffiti. I kind of always have. And so I have a pretty substantial uh, archive of graffiti pieces and some stuff that I like. These are most, these are all things painted around the Bay area for a little zine that I'm making. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, graffiti kind of taught me that things aren't permanent and make sure to document and make sure and save what you need. And maybe I've saved a little more than I need, but, <laughs> but I, uh, I, I make sure and document and keep these things. Um, and I will say over the years, it's been really interesting uh, as someone in the graffiti writing community for such a long time, I have, I have photos that are important to a lot of these writers that may not have gotten their photo when they did it. And so that's been cool over the years when I meet some graffiti writer that I that's work I admire a lot I uh can talk to them and be like oh I have these I saw you had this piece and blah 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 I have this photo and this photo and this photo of your things and that's been really fun uh to share with people too um and then I've been at Letter from Archive a lot <laughs> the last like six years I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about why in a sec but this is part of my uh digging around at Letter from Archive. So now that I'm collecting in the sense, now that I'm like okay with the idea that I don't need to own every <laughs> amazing lettering reference, but I can have good, I can have photos of all that stuff and I can reference that and organize that um, and think of this as a collection. I'm at Letter from Archive all the time. And I always uh, 
try to get some time to myself to just dig through some books, see whatever's coming in that's new. Uh, Stephen Calls is a really great resource for telling me, Kel, you're going to like this thing that just came in. <laughs> and that's amazing. So I always get uh, whatever book from him is just coming into Letter from Archive. And I'll take photos of all that stuff. So there's some things from Ross George here. Um, and uh, these book covers are from William Aids Wiggins. And then there's just some uh, type specimens that I've been uh, really digging into. But it's kind of like anything that comes in those doors is probably of interest to me. And so I, I do a lot of uh, snooping and photographing <laughs> and saving and collecting and, and organizing. Um, yeah, it's all work, right? It's all, all of this is work. It's all part of your practice. It's all part of my, this is all part of my practice and it might feel kind of hectic, but documenting, collecting, designing, drawing, doing graffiti, it's all part of the same thing for me. And I think I'm just going to keep, like I, like you said in the intro, I probably will just keep adding more things that are also related to this field, but uh, other things that I'll do for work, regardless of if they're uh, things that are are paid, just work that I need to be doing. Um, yeah, so I've been working for Letter from Archive for a few years now as the graffiti consultant for them, which has been really amazing. Um, I had been there for a long time as a volunteer and a bunch of other roles. And um, I, yeah, had been pitching this thing for a long time. And um, my friend and the librarian there, Kate Steller Long, had also kind of been pitching that as a, why don't we have very much graffiti documentation in our collection? We have so many other letter form studies. And um, so we, at some point, realized that we had both been having that conversation with whoever we could around the archive. And uh, when she got the new job as the library, the head librarian there, that was a priority for her. And so um, I came on as the consultant and the sort of liaison and the kind of similarly to the, the class that I taught with type electives, it's kind of the, the middleman <laughs> in a lot of ways, the person to, to translate and try to help uh, the design community understand graffiti and the graffiti community have an amazing place that they can go and look at the, these early works or these collectible, hard to find works that they want to see. And so, yeah, that's been a super amazing role. I've been having a really fun time with it. We did, we put on this exhibition, as Lynn was mentioning, um, Subscription to Mischief about uh, magazines uh, in the 1990s. And uh, I got to work with Greg LaMarche, who did that cover on the um, Mass Appeal magazine on the first slide. And uh, he made a graffiti magazine in the 90s that was super important and interesting and rad. And he also saved every piece of paper or photograph that anyone ever mailed him while he was making that thing. And during the time in the 90s, uh, <laughs> prior to my era of, of uh, media and community and ways that you could learn things from magazines, prior to the magazine era, there was the photo trading era in the in the graffiti world. So there was really this you know, super elaborate pen pal system and and a ton of people writing each other letters, sending each other photographs, and you'd learn about what was happening on all sides of the world in the graffiti community. Um, and it was super tight knit. And so that's what allowed a lot of these guys to make magazines because they had traded so many photographs that they got all this cool stuff from South Africa, or they got this, uh, all these amazing pieces from Europe and they wanted to show them. And so they would make their own magazines. So Greg made a magazine called skills. Um, and most of the show is his collection of the things that he had saved. And the rest of the show is, um, magazines that we've been collecting at Letter from Archive to kind of uh, fill out that, that and sort of tell this story of the 90s in graffiti. Um, yeah, and then I've kind of been thinking of like some of this work or some of this practice has to also be sharing what we know, right? Being a teacher or being a mentor in some way or kind of whatever you can. Like, uh, I think that that makes a lot of sense to me. It's something I've been thinking about lately where like, I like teaching and I understand it as a, a fun and sort of important role. I also knew that I, I wasn't the most technical person for the the practice or or I didn't have the most experience maybe for uh, to teach type design, but I, I also know that I can 
understand and like have some empathy for how annoying it is <laughs> to work on a project that like and tinker with these little things and i i try to be that and try to be empathetic and helpful and and um help people along who want to do this thing and i got a lot of that uh when i was trying to get into type and i had um, been doing signs and i had been doing graffiti and i'd been into graphic design but i just it took a long time to make it into type design and i was realizing about part of my work is sharing what I know or part of part of a type designer's work a lot of times is sharing what they know and I thought about what it took for me to get <laughs> into type design and so I just started typing and I have a lot more than just this but this is mostly just people in the type community that were super helpful to me and 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 pushed me a lot and I thought like why not put that in a slide and and start start there as like this is these are all people that I think when I think back on it, they're also sharing what they know and they're also being able to do that as part of their work and like part of their sort of journey in in type. So um, yeah, I, I don't take that lightly. And I feel like that's part of showing love and being respectful to whoever, to, to whoever wants to work on this stuff. Um, and so, yeah, anyway, just to throw that out there, these people have all been really helpful in my life and my type and letter thoughts. Um, okay, so I have this diagram. It's pretty straight. It's kind of straightforward. Uh, the center is overlap type, but I think the center could also be any any project. I'm talking about overlap type today. I also have some other projects in the works that are going to be uh, similarly coming from all of these different places. So uh, stay tuned for that maybe a little later. But um, yeah, overlap type is a pretty fun, <laughs> pretty fun project. So it's something where just you take a bunch of your interests and kind of smash them together and see what see what you can turn out of this. So I start starting with graffiti. Um, the the normal letter form in a graffiti piece is basically always overlapped. So it it's uncommon to see graffiti pieces that don't have letter forms that are really tightly spaced or really negative side bearings. If you want to be technical type people about it and uh, so when I was in type school, I always thought that that was bizarre that there was this these kind of set rules about these letters don't touch because they're from metal and metal letters wouldn't be able to touch. And so this is, uh, and I, I just always thought like, there's no visual rule that makes that not look good or be interesting, you know? And so I've I've constantly from, from type school on thought like, I got to figure out how to do some over more overlapping letter form shapes in type and see if I can sort of prove that roll wrong a little bit um and then there's lettering <laughs> where all my ideas are coming from essentially or getting practiced um and then gathering inspiration which is kind of part of my practice but probably part of most people's practices and then teaching where i've met all these amazing people um a lot of them are the people that i end up working on these projects with and that i like ask to collaborate with me on these on these uh things like overlap type and it's all kind of within the realms of bending genres of letters. And so all of these factors that I was just talking about, I think they've all kind of led into what overlap type is. So this is the website, overlaptype.com. Definitely check it out. Um, and the concept was just to bring something new. And that one new thing, uh, as specific as it is, is to make sure that all of the typefaces that come out from overlap type are on a theme. Um, and they overlap on purpose. That's the plan. <laughs> um, and then I, I've had people say, oh, that's cool, because you could do all these script typefaces and stuff. And I was like, no, only new stuff, only weirder stuff than that, because I, I'm interested in script typefaces as long as they're also pushing boundaries. But I, I also think there's like, there's so much room in this. And it's more of a, as a foundry, we're a little bit more, I think we're a little bit more of a, like, purpose statement or like a, hypothesis kind of thing like we can make there can be more typefaces in the display world that overlap and are interesting in all these different ways and so um i'm running with that as as a theme and trying to make a foundry based on a theme it's not the uh maybe the the classic business model but that's that's not necessarily a part of the way that i think about work you know or or design or things that if i'm gonna release something into the type world, I sort of feel like 
I'd like to contribute. And one of the ways I think I can contribute is by doing something different, <laughs> you know, like doing something a little more me or uh, helping people put out stuff that's a little wilder. Um, so just quick goals that we have, release interesting typefaces, um, work with new and existing type designers to help them release projects. So part of this isn't just that um, I am working with uh, new people to get typefaces out, which I am, and I definitely feel really strongly about. And part of this project was also like, I can make a bunch of overlapping typefaces that I'm interested in, but it's also really exciting to be in this role as someone who was maybe a teacher or a or a friend or a mentor to some of these type people and they are really in the type design community and maybe they went to type school but they haven't released anything yet and regardless of what that is if it's a small project that has two styles or something I still want to like help them get that out there and so uh, I've that's been a, a a part of this process and some of the things that I've been excited about um but yeah, the other thing is just that not all type designers have a home for the weirder projects that they're working on. <laughs> so even if they do work at a really reputable type company and they put out very uh, useful typefaces, I, I also want to be a place, a platform for the weirder, looser, more experimental stuff from those same people if, they, if they're allowed to do that or, or what have you. Um, and then <laughs> this is maybe the the... The thing I have to dream a little bit more and I maybe need everyone's help a little bit more on, but I need this. I'm, I'm hoping that this becomes a place where graphic designers know to look where they're, they're like, Oh, what weird stuff is on overlap type that I can check out and maybe use in a new project. And then in that way, it does become more impactful because actually all this stuff gets used. So this is a, that that's the goal. That's always a work in progress, I guess. But um, yeah, so I'm going to go through a little bit of the catalog just to, just to talk about why these, how this theme plays out. Um, so this is NAR, uh, one of my typefaces. And my whole thought with NAR uh, was <laughs> that I was playing around with these letters. You might have recognized the one of the chalk signs that I did looks an awful lot like this, but I've been playing around with um, sign painters casual letters, which is kind of like a classic quick brush uh, style um, that all sign painters have their own version of what a casual is. Then I played around with what a bottom heavy casual looks like and casuals on their own are really commonly um, overlapping a little bit because they're tightly spaced and they're all caps and they're quick. And so, um, yeah, that started, that started me thinking about this. And really my goals were to translate these um, casual sign painters, casuals into a context that felt a little bit more like jet ski graphics from the nineties. Um, and something with a lot of neon and kind of splashy graphics in the background. And so, yeah, that's essentially what this project was was sort of aiming towards. I know it's not useful for book design. That doesn't matter to me, you know, or, uh, or to typeset for paragraphs. But um, I think it has its place in, in that own, in its own little realm. So that's been a lot of fun to work on. Um, and then I worked with James Platner on this, uh, this type his typeface outgo. Um, James is a really amazing uh, lettering person and type designer. Um, definitely check out his work. Um, and Outgo was when I had talked to him about the project and uh, um, we had started, he had started sketching a few things for it. One of the things was he was thinking immediately when he, when we were talking about overlap, he was thinking about all of these OO ligatures and some of the, um, the lettering books from the 1920s, 1930s. And he was like, how can I get more of those links? I think originally it was it was gonna be named something like link, um, but he was thinking about ways to make, to make more letters link together. Uh, anytime the rounds connect, they can link together. And so uh, that led him to leaning back the, the S <laughs> so that it had more ways to link. And it led him to this really amazing lowercase g that uh, is kind of sitting up on the baseline that, that's kind of like <laughs> resting. <laughs> um, and these are pretty wild ideas for type project, especially a type project that otherwise has some some real like sort of normal functionality that could be used in a lot of ways. And uh, but this is the stuff he likes, you know, he's a lettering artist and someone who's interested in making these things wild and and interesting. And so we talked a lot about it and how to pull this off. And um, and he also 
went ahead and made normalized versions of all of these glyphs and uh, made it pretty easy to switch those out if you need. And so, um, yeah, this is Outgo. It came out in uh, four weights and four widths. It's super cool. I'm, I'm a huge fan of his work. Uh, keep watching for what James Platner is doing. Um, it's awesome. Uh, this is my typeface Boiga. You've probably seen it in use throughout the uh, slides here. And this, uh, this is the inspiration. So I kind of think of this as bending some genres or to, or in between some genres. So these are some uh, sign, some sign photos from a pharmacy in Tokyo that I absolutely loved and thought were so goofy and fun and cute. And uh, these are graffiti fill-ins or uh, also known as throw-ups on the bottom here. Um, mostly, almost all of them are from New York. And I kind of played around with the idea of like, how can I make forms that have this same softness or cuteness that comes from graffiti fill-ins um, or the kind of cuteness and bounciness that comes from these uh, Japanese graphics, but how do, how do I translate that to type and also be respectful to the graffiti community to not make graffiti fonts because I don't believe in them. <laughs> uh, I can talk about that in <laughs> a different time, but um, I, I sort of, uh, yeah. So I think, at some point, I had dialed it to the point where it did not feel, it no longer felt like graffiti letter forms to me, but it seemed like it was within some other genres or in between genres and it could work for other uses. And the reason it's an overlap typeface is because it's an outline typeface. I have a lot of ideas for um, outlined typefaces. And I think I've seen that you see a lot of people outlining typefaces lately, but I think if, if, uh, in their graphic design work, but I like the idea of controlling that. We're type designers, so we want to <laughs> control what, how to make these things look correct so that graphic designers don't mess them up in Illustrator <laughs> when they're using them. Um, and I, yeah, I've been playing around a lot with what, what does an outline look like for type and how do you make it overlap continuously? So all of these are, have basically the exact same side bearings, but that took a lot of work to get them to like, uh, play well together. So, um, yeah, this is a ongoing project that I've, I have been having a lot of fun with, but I think it's in between genres. At least that's how I think about it. And then Sako, uh, hopefully you've seen this typeface already. Absolutely love it. Um, Libby Bischoff is super rad. She goes by Type D Nord. Um, her 52 fonts project, which was a super ambitious project that she's talked about with type electives, I believe in the past. Um, was trying to put out a typeface a, a week after her year in type school um, and she pulled it off <laughs> and uh, this is one of the ones that came out and right when she made it I had already I'd been thinking about overlap type and I just talked to her because we we work together a lot and uh, we're friends and I was like oh man this would be the thing this would be amazing on overlap type and she's like cool yeah I've actually wanted to expand it and make an italic that's like goopier and sillier and uh has this sort of like I, I always think of it as kind of like a fish face for a lowercase e <laughs> that I love so um yeah we've been working together on this for a while and uh absolutely love her work and I also like thinking about that I got to these overlap type projects through my graffiti background thinking about how everything can overlap in that way but that's not what her references were uh to make these letter forms and they work great and they're just their own thing. And so I think that's really fun to think about, like people getting there from totally different directions. And then we have something new coming out next week. I'm super excited uh, by uh, Jake Cummings, um, this typeface forager. And uh, this is what the glyphs look like. And it's coming out in five different weights, uh, but two styles. So everything that he made, you'll see, a, you can see a couple of them here. Um, there's an overlapping version and a just tightly spaced version. So that it feels like he wanted it to kind of be in the Art Nouveau world, but also in the 1970s kind of letter set world. And so um, we played around with uh, keeping keeping an overlapping theme because I think this looks really good as a headline here and, and uh, it was a lot of fun, but also having the functionality of this typeface of yes, some people are gonna wanna use it for regular things too or or have the headline be the overlap and the the body text be uh, a more easy to read thing maybe and so um yeah we've been playing around with this for a while uh 
Jake also goes by Dingbat Co. So check him out. Um, yeah, that's coming soon. And there's more to come. But I think the the main thing I wanted to say is just like as a sort of open call <laughs> in a lot of ways is I have this funny platform and I'm trying to do this stuff on a theme, but I also want to work with new and rad people in type design. And so I'm open. Please holler at me if you have you have any ideas or you want to work on something together or you just like the idea and need to get something out and want to like put a typeface out there and feel like part of more part of the community or something like I'm I'm open to that and I want to be supportive of that and uh yeah let me know um so yeah I kind of I kind of just ran through <laughs> what I think of as work all of this stuff is sort of inspiration sometimes work is just getting inspired I feel like in a lot of ways or like researching and getting inspired um Talked a little bit about my thoughts on overlapping letters, but I'm sure there's plenty of other ways to look at them and building a community and just being a letter person. This is just me being a letter person in all ways. And so uh, that's, I believe, it for me. Um, I've, put, I've noted all the typefaces I used and all the people I've been working with or mentioned and their social handles if you want them. Um, yeah, I'm stoked to be able to talk to y'all and to get to talk about work hopefully it wasn't too chaotic <laughs> a set of slides but uh but you probably get a little sense of what is going on in my head a lot of the time um yeah and i think we could probably open it up to questions soon amazing thank you so much kel i mean uh there has been lots of love in the chat like it's so inspiring to get a little glimpse of what the world looks like through your eyes and you know, it's, 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 I mean, it's, everything is so very inspiring. And I want to um, uh, ask you some questions that are from the Q&A. Yeah. And our first question is from Nikki. How was your transition from graffiti to lettering and type design in regards to legibility? Have you ever mm. written toy on someone else's uh, piece or tag? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Okay. Two very, uh, very interesting questions so i think um and this this might be different for a lot of different people and the way that they grew up in graffiti or what styles they were influenced by um i had a lot of great mentors that i didn't mention in that list that are from my graffiti writing days and who actually would look at my sketches and edit them for me and tell me what was working and talk to me about what wasn't and talk about how much you could overlap letters so they were still legible and and highlight where the counters were which I wasn't the term we would use like where's the hole in that letter at this in this thing but like that counter form being the super important part of how those letter forms are legible and so we started playing around I started playing around a lot more with like how do I place these counter forms first and then think about the rest um yeah so legibility wasn't I think yeah, it's hard to talk about because you're not looking at my graffiti work, but I I don't I do fairly legible uh, pieces, and I I sort of think of that as like more of the tradition of the 1970s 1980s subway era graffiti, which is the stuff I care about, and I think the that's kind of the lineage of um, of the graffiti writing world today, and so I follow that world fairly closely, and so um, yeah, legibility I think was never really that much of an issue writing toy over someone i i think i think the the fun part is that i've had toy written over my pieces plenty of times with especially when i was like a young kid and, and just starting um no i don't think that's uh i think we get this question a lot at letter from archive actually um we have this whole amazing exhibit and we talk a lot about the 90s and this important like sort of visual world and all these pieces and they're so detailed and there's such cool stuff you can learn and the first thing almost anyone that's not associated with graffiti says like the first question they want to know is like cool do these guys fight each other when they're doing this work or like that's amazing is there lots of violence and, and like yeah I'm sure there is uh, uh, depending on where you live that's a that's a much different world I think uh, I grew up in the suburbs where we were sort of trying to do this stuff on bridges in the middle of nowhere. So not a lot of beef uh, in that way. Um, yeah. And I don't, that's not really part of my personality either. <laughs> I'm like a 
large, large man. And I think that's gotten, I've gotten away with a lot of stuff over the years, like, uh, for that. And, um, I don't, yeah, I'm glad because I can't really back it up, uh, <laughs> physically. I don't, I don't have that, uh, vibe to me. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers that. Uh, there is a related question um, about the uh, the subscription to Mischief show from from Sam. So maybe I'll insert it here. Uh, mm -hmm. Sam says, I think what you're doing to bridge different lettering cultures is important work. It's something I've also tried to do as part of my own work. However, I've been burned by the graffiti community where I've ended up having to pay damages for tagging at venues I've hired for events and wondered if and how this has been handled at the show, if yeah, know. yeah, so um, pretty interesting to work on this project and just even to be the consultant at Letter Form Archive, a place that's kind of fancy. And honestly, when I started being interested in design, but I was still like an active graffiti writer and didn't really have that much of a connection to the type world or anything, I was trying to get into type stuff. It was an intimidating place, you know, it wasn't it wasn't the easiest, like accessible place when I started doing that. I think they've done a lot of work to make that better and make that more accessible and feel feel better. Um, but yeah, it can be a little uh, unwelcome. The, those worlds can be a little unwelcoming because type is such a serious study a lot of times. Um, uh yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought. I, oh, I, I, so when I started as the graffiti consultant there, um, I tapped into a lot of friends about, for a lot of uh, feedback, basically. I was like, here's what I'm going to do with this place. Here's what I'm working on. I'm buying these things. I'm trying to collect this. What else can I like get that, that will also feel good for the community or like how, you know, how do I approach this person about buying some stuff from them when I, when, and like, they're going to know it's for a library and a weird little public thing. And is that okay? And how do I like approach that? So I think luckily I've been able to talk to a lot of friends that are deeper into the graffiti world than me. And um, they've been able to connect me to a lot of people. And at this point we're at, we're starting to be at the point where we're buying collections from established like or old school graffiti writers that everybody loves in the in the bay area and that's been really fun to like be able to buy these big collections and then to show them and to tell all the all the folks that come to see the the collection or the old zines from the 90s that this is so and so's copies of this thing and then they get more excited because they're there's they've seen that work their whole life so they're like wow this is his actual zine that he had and so that's been really fun um, yeah, it takes a lot of work to translate that thing. And there's still no way to stop people from writing on stuff, you know, like at the end of the day, that's, that's what it is, you know, that's part of, part of the whole thing. And so I tried to prep letter form archive with that <laughs> knowledge as we were having a huge opening party and there was people online out front, uh, the entire night cause it was, uh, sold out and huge, but it went pretty well, mostly because we have a lot of elders, like a lot of older graffiti writers that are really established that everybody knows and they're in the room too and they're being respectful. So people are kind of like trying to play within that realm. But yeah, it's a, that's part of my job for sure <laughs> is balancing what, what that's going to feel like, how that's going to feel respectful to graffiti writers so that they don't feel disrespected by it and then want to trash something. All right, thank you so much, Kel. That was really good. <laughs> uh, can't yeah. wait to, to go uh, see the exhibit in person. Uh, you said it's open until next year, right? The yeah, first, first yeah. week of January. Yeah, it should be up to January sixth now. We awesome. Got extended, so nice. Um, we have a we have a couple of a uh, few last questions. Uh, if it's okay, if we go just a little bit over, um, to wrap up. But um, yeah. the, the, the first question is by Adriana, which I'm sure you know. I don't know mm -hmm. yes. yeah. <laughs> I think she's been a student of all of us here. Yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> awesome. her question is a very interesting one. And she asked that as you infiltrate both cool worlds of type and graffiti, right? Mm -hmm. I'm curious about what does graffiti community think about type and the fonts sometimes? Is that a little bit too much inspiration from the streets? Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Um, like, are they worried about stuff feeling like it's uh biting graffiti i think that um, that's a concern but uh yeah i guess that that relationship between you know like kind of like the stuff you were kind of talking about 
Yeah. So I think, I mean, the the graffiti community from my perspective is constantly looking at fonts. <laughs> That's like a we're out they're they're out painting fonts on freight trains right now and like they're printing them out to do it, you know, and maybe even just referencing the R or something because it's like a little cleaner and has a cool, interesting shape. Um, another thing I've been noticing a lot, and I have a, an entire separate talk plan in the works for this, but I want to do a, a whole talk on what graffiti stickers sort of mean, because there's an entire world of uh, graffiti writers doing printed stickers of only typefaces that they are not drawing anything on, but they're, they might stretch them a little bit to fit, <laughs> to fill out the thing, but but um, that that whole separate world of people using typefaces in the graffiti community. I don't know that they know the names of those typefaces, but they're definitely, I've seen a lot of, uh, there's some folks in San Jose who are pretty prolific with stickers and they are all using uh, Oh No Blaze Face and Oh No Beastly. <laughs> and I'm not sure if they're like, they know and they're fans of James or not, but uh, it's it's something really, really fun. And uh, vice versa in a in a fun way. Um, when I used to work uh, in a little office with with uh, James from Oh No, he was I was kind of we would be talking about stuff. I would be showing him graffiti stuff, and there's a couple writers that he would like look at their work and be like, "Whoa, that's so cool!" But he's like, he kind of messed up the X or something on this thing. And then at some point, he started commenting those things on Instagram, and I had to tell him like, "Yo, yo, yo." please don't do that. You're, you could run into some issues to tell this guy that it was cool, but his ex isn't, it has, is having a problem or something. <laughs> and it's like, they want, you can't give them feedback in that way. They should take that, but they won't. <laughs> you know, that's, that's kind of an interesting thing. So hopefully I didn't talk too far around that question, but. No, that, that was really good. I feel like there's uh, there's always a conversation that's happening between, you know, two kind of like related disciplines, both in yeah. both letter forms and mm -hmm. both kind of like taking things from each other. And I think your practice is specifically the way you, you position it. It's like they're learning from each other and it's kind of like an, I wouldn't know if it's evolution, but it's definitely uh, something new that's, that's happening. Um, yeah. We have uh, two last questions. And if Great. we didn't get to your question, please, you can, you're welcome to reach out to Cal. Uh, yeah, but please. we don't want to keep you all too long. We know we promise we'll be done by the end of the hour. So um, the last two questions are combined. They come from Laura. The first one is by Laura Webster. Um, she she asks, "They love the book collection. Um, do you have any recommendations of favorite lettering books?" And mm. uh, to piggyback on that, uh, Gerleo, uh this comment is amazing. I'm smiling so wide, Kel. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> sharing your work and thoughts. Um, question, um, you know. Graphic designers, type designers, comics, etc. Tell us about some of your favorite graffiti writers. So yeah, mm. lettering books and graffiti writers, and so that oh. we can end on on a really awesome note. Love that. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, yeah, lettering books. Uh, if you're not already digging deep into what Ken Barber's put out in the world, please do. This is this is a this is simple stuff here. <laughs> Everybody, well, learn whatever you can from Ken Barber. I've been following his work since way before I was interested in type. I just was like, this guy draws the coolest letters. So I was signed up for his uh, his type specimens in you know the early two thousands as the very first piece of type thing that I had ever kept and collected and and looked at a lot so a uh, huge fan of Ken Barber um I would put him on that uh list of people who have taught me a lot but we don't really know each other so <laughs> it's kind of that might be a little weird but that's true he has taught me a lot um and I am a huge fan uh let's see I'm a big fan of Samuel Wello William A. Dwiggins if you can dig into Dwiggins catalog like there's some there's some cool stuff there, not just the not just the typefaces, but digging into some of that lettering for book jackets. Um, what else am I always excited about? Uh, Bill Bowley, <laughs> B O L E Y, is a very obscure letter, uh, like sign painter person, 30s, 40s, 50s, somewhere in that range, and he has a a script that's like one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. So please go find it. Uh, it's California Casuals. It's absolutely incredible uh, sign painter work. Um, and let's see. Um, 
yeah, let me talk about graffiti writers. So I think just real quickly, I'll just say there's a lot of the graffiti writing community that I'm following and paying attention to. And there's a lot that I'm not. So if it's people from uh, from certain styles in Los Angeles, I don't care. I'm not invested. It's not for me. That's all, that's all good. It's cool. The spikier or sharp stuff, they're like more spidery feeling pieces are not really... Uh, that's not in my background or wheelhouse. So um, I'm also struggling to read those pieces and not not uh, super excited about them <laughs> and maybe a little scared by that stuff sometimes. But um, I uh, grew up outside of the Bay Area mostly. So um, people in the Bay Area that were super influential, there's this guy Quake um, who ran Lord's Crew. Um, he was a big deal. Defy also from Lord's Crew, huge, huge thing, D-E-F-I-E huge fan of Defy's work, um, super fun pieces and and interesting characters and stuff. Uh, and then I got, in San Francisco, there was this group called ICP, um, big fan of them, not the Insane Clown Posse, but whole other, whole other amazing crew. Um, definitely check their work out, Butter and Twick and uh, Scoo and all of those guys. Um, and then in Berkeley, there was a really amazing scene. There's a really amazing crew, or at least that came out of Berkeley called FSC, um, that has a bunch of writers like Giggs and Awe. And uh, they have this feeling of New York based graffiti, but they're coming from Berkeley in the late 80s, starting in the late 80s and kind of creating their own thing. And all of their work is really cohesive together within that crew. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah, that's some of the stuff I'm looking at. There's always the OG people I'm looking at from New York, like Wayne or Dero or, um, yeah, there's <laughs> there's way too many to mention right now, but that's that's a little bit of my reference point. Um, some of my local, I'll talk about some of my local OGs. Amazing. Thank you so much. I feel like my Googling skills uh, are just like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. This is um this is so inspiring. This was such an amazing talk. It's it's right. always so fascinating to hear like where like the multifaceted parts of your practice just because your inspiration mm -hmm. seems to come from everywhere, like in daily they life. Awesome <laughs> yeah. Like, ah we're all uh yeah, I think we're all chomping at the bits to get to this <laughs> exhibition and also um check out overlap type and all those things. If you don't follow them already definitely do um yeah, yeah I, I think with that we'll wrap up the talk but any last words Cal that you would like to impart upon the folks no I think I mean if we're talking about the type design community I think this is an incredible sort of small world of people that are helping each other and like I was saying and like I was trying to show with those those names like everybody has a bunch of people backing them and I also want to be that backing the next generation or whoever's around right now that's trying to make something cool. So uh, yeah, hit me up if you need help with something or or, uh, or think about building up your network of people. You know, sometimes right after type school, I got a lot of help by just having a weekly meeting with a few of the students that were it. So it was, I had a, a weekly meeting and I needed to show some progress every week <laughs> uh, to my friends Tommy Sharp and Tad Wagner and James Edmondson and we all sat together every week and I had to bring some new work done and that uh, that kept me moving in type design so uh, try to build yourself that little community that's all thanks thanks awesome. so much this is awesome thanks for having me Thank you so much, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you so Thanks, much. Everyone. Yeah, have a great morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Thank you so much, Kel. All righty. Have a great one. Bye, y'all. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye.